So my daughter is in kindergarten and I'm already jamming here. Uh, traffic, Monday morning, it's a beautiful Monday morning, so I'm actually quite happy about that. And to be honest, I was happy about the end result of Croatia versus Denmark, but that was a close one. Um, let's start from from the beginning, because the beginning was the one thing that was really uh, nuts in many ways, and that was the big, uh, that, that were the first two goals and the only two goals of the game up until the penalty shootout. Um, the first goal uh, was kind of a billiard type goal where uh, I think it was Jurgensen who shot the ball onto the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper went to the post and went right in and I said to myself I'm I admit it I'm in the Croatian corner uh, on that matchup again nothing against you Denmark really but I I just thought that uh, given the performances uh, so far in the tournament Croatia is the better team and uh, Denmark was actually more of a disappointment if they would have played like they played in Ireland when they qualified um, I think I um, could have seen myself going the other way but so far uh, Denmark was a little bit of a disappointment so I was yelling out loud to my wife off oh, they already scored in the first minute worst start possible for Croatia and I expect it will be a very uh, dreary affair in the sense that yeah Croatia will try and try and try and get nothing in because Denmark uh, can defend very well well I was wrong three minutes later um, clearance hits uh, Danish defender, ball bounces back towards the goal, right to the feet of Mandzukic, who just has to put it in. 1-1. One, one. Uh, two brilliant goals to start off the game, and it actually set the tone for, for the game. And uh, probably was, for the game itself, it was not a good thing that the equalizer came so uh, quickly, because it basically was a 0-0 again, and the two teams had to still feel each other out. I thought in the first half, um, I mean, it was not the boring, boring game as Spain-Russia, but in the first half, I also thought that Croatia was a, took a little bit more the initiative, but without being too effective. Um, there were not too many scoring chances overall. I mean, yeah, sometimes you thought there is a chance that they might get something, but it was never this clear cut, yeah, this has to be a goal chance, at least now to my rare collection. Um, second half, which uh, to, to, to be honest, for the most time, well, halfway through, I only watched, yeah, I only listened to the rather rather than watch, but from the few things that I saw and gathered, or the overall feeling that I gathered was Denmark really neutralized Croatia and had more of the game. Uh, even the better, the clearer chances. It was kind of um, Croatia dominated possession, but Denmark had the more, was a little bit more dangerous and the game was still lively i mean there were more open spaces it wasn't uh, not that you know everything in one half play that we had from spain against russia where russia is sitting uh, back and spain finds absolutely no way of getting around that uh, damningly i gotta say but yeah, the game was a little bit more open, but it gets got slower and slower and slower and slower and slower. And yeah, then Croatia woke up towards the end of the first, uh, second half. But you already got the good feeling that this is not gonna go. Uh, this is not gonna end after a regulation. So it was. So we had an overtime period, which for the most part continued that, that trend. Uh, the, was not a pretty game to watch um, but then five minutes before the end excitement um, the midfield of Croatia that has so been so neutralized um, and that got a little bit uh, liveliness late on when Kramaric came on and I think Kovacic as well I think he had a pretty uh, bad scene when he when his shoulder got uh, sort of injured oh yeah just give me a second, I want to get through this line of cars here somehow. Oh, this, will be, this will be difficult. Go 
because it's absolute gridlock here. All I want to do is get through here. Hey, hey, hey. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. This was not easy, but I got it. So, um, you know, there were a few substitutions. It was also for the first time that we had four substitutions uh, on, on a team, thanks to a new ruling by FIFA that in overtime you get an additional substitution. Maybe this helped the game because uh, Croatia, after again they neutralized Asia, Croatia, you could see, got the initiative, but it really got when uh, there was a beautiful pass played through. Uh, Croatian attacker runs straight at the goalie. Uh, clear path to the goal. Uh, goes past the goalie and is then felt from the back um, in this uh, penalty. I'm so bad with names these days. I'm sorry. I should remember that. I, I remember the key, 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 key place, but I don't remember another Croatian, the name of the Croatian who ran to goal. Um, he gets felled and yeah it's a clear penalty and i don't know i know there's a new ruling that you don't have to have a straight red card uh if it's a fight for the ball i really thought this guy was only going for the feet of the diff of the croatian player uh he had little to no chance for for the ball I, and i also think that for such a foul they should maybe institute something like a conditional red card that you have the penalty is converted, you can play on. Uh, if not, you go off. Uh, might be an interesting rule. Should I add it to my list of things that I might want to see improvement? So I felt a little bit strange, but I really thought, okay, one uh, five minutes left, Croatia now will make that goal. Modric has been pretty cool, but uh, then I look at his body language and I saw that um, although he wasn't very effective in the game, he seemed a little bit uh, exhausted. And yeah, for a penalty, that's never a good, uh, good, good thing. And I also remember Modric still from 2000, Euro 2008, where he missed a penalty in the penalty shootout against Turkey very very badly and he almost shot this penalty the same way as Modric you 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 does not a lot of power behind it and flat and so Schmeichel who did all his crazy things and this is something that really can distract the player saw it many many times saved the penalty and it seemed like yeah the penalty kill is on uh, Croatia suddenly got super initiative they say we missed that penalty of oh, this there is a there is a guy who will save a lot of penalties and you could feel that Croatia really 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 wanted to get it going the dynamic changed right there it got really exciting for five minutes not many big chances any, anymore but you could really see Croatia took the initiative and took the game to Denmark and Denmark probably felt well we have a pretty good goalkeeper there he might save a few so, yeah, initiative was on, but not much was happening uh, afterwards. I mean, not much in st the score didn't change. Uh, uh, it was more happening in those five minutes than in probably the yeah, 60 minutes before that. I think right, right around the 60th minute of the game, uh, the game really got to a stalemate in a way. Uh, it got slower and more condensed. So, penalty shootout. And seemingly all the advantage was on Denmark's side. You had a goalkeeper that seemed hot, that really you could, you could see his fire, uh, that he was motivating his players and he tried to get in the head ahead of the Croatians. And then Denmark also wins the coin toss. And the coin toss usually means if you go first, you have a 60% chance of winning. Simply by the fact that uh, if you convert on a steady pace, the other team always has to play catch up, which is an uh, enormous uh, mental burden. And so, yeah, I thought at first, okay, we know exactly how it's gonna go. Denmark will put their best players first, as they did, and the penalty shoot, and Kasper Schmeichel will save a few. And in addition, I knew from my Croatian colleague that Subasic is kind of. Uh, he doesn't trust the goalkeeper one bit. So uh, mentally, although I was still somewhat hoping for, for the miracle, I was, yeah, Denmark is gonna win that. And to be honest, if I take out the five minutes at the end, Denmark seemed to me the better team at that point. I, I gotta em em emphasize on that. And, and I said, yeah, 
maybe it's even deserved, deservedly so that they will go on. So um, still for Croatia, but getting okay with Denmark winning. And then Eriksen misses the first penalty or Subasic gets his hand on the ball, puts it on the post. And I'm thinking, wow, there's a chance. Of course, Schmeichel saves the next one. And at that point, then I thought, oi, maybe Denmark made the wrong choice. Going first is usually a no-brainer, but you had a hot goalkeeper that just saved the penalty. Um, although Schmeichel saved the one, it was 0-0, uh, zero, zero, and the next two got converted. So uh, it, was, it was then 2-2. Two, two. You always had the feeling that Schmeichel was just at this tad closer and he saved, he almost saved the Modric penalty. Modric went third and I mean it went just that much past his feet. So Modric went to the safe route down the middle but I was so darn close that I really thought yep this guy Schmeichel is in Croatia's head and I think there was a tactic error by Denmark. They should have gone second because Lech Michael saved the first penalty. Croatia was mentally not up. I know it is against uh, intuition, but in that case, you got the first penalty save. Then I think with that boost, Eriksen, I don't think will miss that easily. It's conjecture, but I really feel that way. Uh, that with a hot goalkeeper going, going going in, Denmark would be better off to go second. Because you could frustrate uh, Croatia right from, from the beginning. I was about to say Germany for some reason. Um, yeah, so the next, it was 0-0, then it got 2-2, two, two, but it was always, as I said, Schmeichel always seemed to get it just a little bit closer. And then Subasic saves another one. Um, very badly shot. Uh, by the way, the penalty by Shea, Shar, is for sure not Kia. Second one, uh, best penalty of the tournament. I mean, even better than the ones than the one by uh, Harry Kane against Panama. High pressure. I mean, fully shot under the uh, crossbar. Cannot cannot be done better. There is no way that's gonna be saved. And that, that 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 was another reason why I thought that Denmark has the upper hand. But then Subasic um, gets his save. And I'm thinking, wow, really? Schmeichel saves the next one. And I'm, uh, you won it, you lost it. And then Subajic pulls out another save about a terribly shot penalty. I really gotta say, this was a terrible shot. Uh, was it Jurgensen? I don't, I don't know. The last player for Denmark uh, really made a mess out of that penalty. And I think at this point, Subajic had saved two. Uh, Schmeichel had saved two, and I think uh, Subasic was in the Danish head, and I underestimated that effect. I still had had in my mind that my colleague said, Ooh, this guy is a little bit shaky, but he saved three penalties. I mean, three versus two of Schmeichel. And at that point, uh, even if Schmeichel tried everything to distract Rakitic, you could see how Rakitic was suddenly focused and he, and he really could get the feeling that, yeah, he feels quite confident and he made the penalty and Croatia went on. It's gonna get a long video, but not only do I have a long drive, but there's a lot to say. Uh, I love penalty shootouts and this one was actually a masterclass in uh, psycho games. Uh, and I really think that Denmark made that mistake. They sh for once, it would have been better to go second. You've got the hot goalkeeper going in. So yeah, uh, some car that slow just shifted late into my lane. So for that reason, um, I think have, that was a mistake. And that was maybe the one thing that saved Croatia, especially since their goalkeeper pulled out also the performance for, for the ages. Most of the penalties that Denmark shot were not that great to begin with. Uh, gotta be honest, and probably were not that hard saves. I think he saved two that were going down the center. And yeah, this is also never, uh, you know, if you do it down the center, really do it down the center and not somewhere uh, 
to the outside, a little bit off center. Uh, but yeah, he got into their head as well. And I also got this guy, like I say, when Modric was um, shooting his penalty, you could see Schmeichel thought, I need to pull this one out. It was absolutely, uh, he, he wanted to get, get momentum and he was making his moves here and he pointed. You're gonna shoot it in that corner, the other corner, not the one that you show, 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 show it in. And he didn't do it while Modric was trying to make his attempt, no. He did it right when Modric went down because the Croatian players, you could see, they were trying to not look at the goalkeeper. Absolutely have no look at the goalkeeper because he will distract you. But he did it right before that and Modric surely saw that. And this is another way to get in, in, into the um, shooter's head. The goalkeeper has only at most 20% chance of saving. At most. I mean, if you hot goalkeeper and you get something and, you know, if you got some data, Oh, I could do a whole video. I have a whole post on penalty shootouts, probably, and a presentation. I'll probably post this in the link in the description because uh, there's so much going on there that it's very interesting. This was absolutely, absolutely a masterclass of momentum shifting, and I, I gotta rewatch this because there were so many shifts, twists, and turns in there. Um, it was kind of amazing. Um, it actually saved that game. That game was started out okay. It was, but it was clearly number three of the four played and distant number three, better than Russia versus Spain. So last thing I want to say, I talked a lot about this penalty shootout. <laughs> uh, last thing I want to say, uh, Jersey matchup. Of course, it went that way. Um, the one thing for Denmark. Uh, that I gotta say is that I thought if Denmark moved move on the Jersey matchup for the quarterfinal between with Russia would have been a little bit clearer because Russia would have played in red and Denmark would have played in white uh, and probably Russia would have played in all red and Denmark in all white because the red white and white red combo is a horrible one when you play against each other so that one uh, seemed clear to me now with Croatia moving on. I still think Croatia will play in their wonderful dark jerseys. Um, yesterday with the Red Sox, it, I don't know, it, it, it just does not look right to me. I'm sorry. Uh, I think if that jersey was all red or all navy, I would believe uh, I, have, I would be fine with it. But putting this jacket pattern and then I also the, the shade of the navy. This is a really nice navy, navy blue. It's more like the steely navy that. Uh, I don't know, uh, just there is something about the jersey I really don't like and I don't like the red numbers and the red socks with it. I understand why they're doing it and you know, I could go on and on and on about how I don't like this jersey and this video is getting very long already. I just don't, I just don't, I don't like the Croatia jerseys this time around and I usually, I'm, I usually like Croatia jerseys. I really do the checker, the jacket pattern brilliant but now they make this huge one with the zigzaggy pattern ah it just does not seem right to me i gotta be honest with you so uh yeah but it was the jersey matchup that i predicted and i still think that croatia will go on wearing this one and probably wear it quite a few times uh we might not see the regular jersey again <sighs> say what you will um i think against russia Russia will play in red and Croatia will play in dark jerseys. But we'll, we'll have to see. I'll make another one of that. So that's what I thought about Denmark Croatia. I talk a lot about a boring game. I should have spent that, I almost spent that, that much time I'm talking Argentina too, Argentina France. But that was an intriguing matchup uh, to, uh, overall. Let me know what you thought about the game. Let me know what you thought about the jer jersey matchup. And yeah, we have. I think at least one really exciting game uh, in Brazil, Me Mexico ahead of us. And I don't count out that Belgium, Japan could also be an interesting, so interesting times ahead. I just hope we don't see a repeat of uh, the Spain, Russia, still not quite a word. Well, still have a bit to go, but I'll end the video here and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Well, I remember one last thing. Um,
you know that I sent home the teams that got eliminated and yep, this was the first matchup of Croatia-Denmark where I don't have a shirt of either one of them and it's a mistake, I know. I should have both nations to be honest with you. So I don't have a Denmark shirt and that's why I felt very comfortable doing this in the car because there's no one to retire. I'm very thankful so because I'm getting rather thin as you saw yesterday. There was only blue, yellow and white left. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.